Hello and welcome everybody to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe World Record Review, January 2021. My name is Rod, and I've been involved in the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe community ever since the game's release. The MK8DX time trial scene has been truly fascinating to watch over the years, having gone from somewhat boring, firehopless Mario Kart 8 Wii U World Records to insane new strategies like the Baby Revolution and Motion Glider. Ever since the game's release back in 2017, players have been optimizing their fastest times for each track, with 200cc time trials being introduced as well. From the Dragon Driftway gap cut to the Toad Harbor train strat, this game has seen times hit that were once never thought possible. As we enter 2021, I think it's a great time to start recapping the world records in a comprehensive video, and that's exactly what we're doing here. Inspired by Enmead's monthly review of Mario Kart Wii World Records, this is the beginning of a new series based around the exact same concept, but now from Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. 2020 was an amazing year for our time trial scene, with 95 of the 96 total world records being broken, and I'm confident that 2021 will be an incredible year for us as well. In January, 48 world records were broken across 12 unique tracks in 150cc, and 39 world records across 12 unique tracks were broken in 200cc, adding up to a grand total of 87 records just this month across 22 unique tracks. Before we get started, please please leave any feedback you have in the comments. As this is the first video, I'm sure there's plenty we can improve on. All right, now let's move on to the world records we saw in January, 2021. To start off the year, the first world record of 2021 was on Ice Ice Outpost, which saw four improvements over the course of the month. On New Year's Day, Alberto improved his own world record by 24 milliseconds to set a time of 146.618, marking the first world record on this track in 11 months. Just an hour later, Alberto would improve once again, this time by 87 milliseconds, to set the first 146.5 on the track at 146.531. These improvements are in part thanks to the use of the motion glider technique that has been used to improve many world records over the past year. For those unaware, motion glider is a technique used to gain a notable advantage on air handling during a glider, building up insane speed and momentum. During a run, the player can pause the game to enable motion controls, and the game will register both the analog stick and the motion turning. To put it bluntly, this technique is kind of annoying, but it saves time, so we do it anyway. Alberto doesn't remember much about his .618 run since he improved it so quickly. He said it was a pretty sloppy and inconsistent run, carried by the around 200 milliseconds saved overall by using motion glider, as well as a very good end of lap 3. For his .531 time, his lap 1 and 3 were solid, but on lap 2, the first double trick Nisk lost a lot of time because he didn't carry enough momentum into the second trick, and then got too much air on the following ramp. The triple mini turbo strat is quite random and incredibly difficult to do consistently. On this run, he unfortunately got a very slow triple mini turbo. The next day, on January 2nd, Army would swoop in and snipe Alberto's world record, improving it by 8 milliseconds to a 146.523. Army said that laps 1 and 2 were, quote, absolutely atrocious, and he was on pace to finish with a high 146. However, he got super lucky on lap 3, especially at the triple mini turbo section, which was enough to get him the record. Once again, on the exact same day, Alberto would come back and reclaim his world record and beat ARMY by a whopping 96 milliseconds to set the first 146.4 on Ice Ice Outpost with a 146.427. Lap 1 was really great and only 40 milliseconds behind the BKS. Alberto says he was surprised by lap 2 being a .826 since the first NISC trick was really high, but his triple mini turbo was nice. Lap 3's triple mini turbo section wasn't as good, but overall, it was a solid run to bring in the point 0.4. The best known splits for this track currently add up to a 146.201, so we could maybe see a 146.3 run here in the coming months. Currently, neither Army nor Alberto have plans to continue the track though. Alberto says he's nowhere near his potential, but wants to focus on other tracks since Ice Ice Outpost is, quote, 
extremely annoying to play. Congratulations to both ARMY and Alberto on your world records here. Also on New Year's Day, we saw a second track's world record broken. Nasuno reclaimed the world record on DS TikTok Clock, beating Section's former world record by 33 milliseconds to achieve a 143.717. Nasuno said his lap 1 was pretty normal, with nothing standing out as extra good or extra bad. On lap 2, he lost a bit of time missing the low trick at the first ramp, and about .05 at the MT trick at the glider ramp, which he described as quote, terrible. Nasuno doesn't think the low trick on the cog at the end saves any time, which is why he did the high trick at the end of lap 2. Here's a comparison of the high trick on lap 2 and the low trick he does on lap 3. Nasuno said that overall, his lap 3 didn't have the best lines and that he can make parts of it better, like the last trick. This is just Nasuno's second world record on this track, getting his first in May of 2020. The best known splits is a 143.447, and this run is just under a quarter of a second off of that. Congratulations Nasuno on reclaiming the world record here after 4 months. We also had DS Wario Stadium pick up right where it left off in December and ending with 3 world records this month. On January 5th, Stir improved his own world record here by 2 milliseconds to a 151.319. Then, the next day on January 6th, he would lower it a second time, but sadly this time was only by 1 millisecond to a 151.318. Starting with the .319, Stir said that by and large the driving was clean. Wario Stadium's first ramp can give what is known as a lucky ramp. Usually, you will trick off the ramp, start your drift on the ground, and release your mini turbo. However, if you trick on the first frame of the ramp and hold left, you'll get the trick and then start a drift on the ramp, allowing you to get a super mini turbo on the ground. The lucky ramp saves about 50 to 100 milliseconds per lap, and it's not done on lap 1 due to the coin strat. Stur didn't get the lucky ramp on lap 2, but he did get it on lap 3. Missing the lucky ramp on lap 2 actually threw him off a bit, since the ghost he was racing did get it. After he got the lucky ramp on lap 3 though, it was just clean driving to get the world record. The next day, he had been playing for 3 hours when he got his 1 millisecond improvement. In this run, lap 1 was worse than what he averaged, which confused him since he actually felt good about the lap. This subpar lap left him with little stress, and on lap 2 he played really well and was also able to get the lucky ramp, which resulted in the best known split for lap 2. Lap 3 was average, and Stur didn't think he would get the record, as he was behind his ghost on screen. But he did, and when he crossed the line he was shocked to see the U win on his screen, and had a very loud reaction, which prompted his mom to come in and ask what was going on. After this run, Stur had to take a break from time traveling because of school, but he would return later in the month, on the 24th, to lower the world record by 10 milliseconds to a 151.308. Lap 1 was similar to his .319 run, which is pretty good. Laps 2 and 3 weren't anything special on their own, but the consistency was enough to give the improvement despite not getting the lucky ramp on either lap. Stur says that he was actually really calm throughout the run, as it was early in his session. He knew he told himself he was going to get the record during lap 2, and that's exactly what happened. The best known splits on this track give a time of 151.194, and this world record is only 114 milliseconds off of that total. A 151.2 time on this track is going to be unbelievably difficult, but knowing how Stur is with his records, he's going to want to achieve that time. A point two is in fact Stur's goal eventually, but for now he will be focusing on other tracks. Congrats Stur on your improvements this month, and good luck on achieving a point two here. January also saw some activity on Bodar Dunes for the first time in a full year. On January 5th, Panda broke what was at the time the second longest lasting current world record defeating ARMY's world record by 21 milliseconds to set a new time of 148.266. This is Panda's first world record on the track, and originally he was just going for high worldwide tops. Panda implemented a new strat on lap 1 by getting the mini turbo on the first ramp of the Bone Bridge, which before it was only done on laps 2 and 3. Panda described all three laps as being clean, with not many noticeable mistakes. For the Shroom lap 3, he went a bit wider, as he wanted to ensure a completed run. The next day, Panda would improve two more times, the first of which was by 83 milliseconds to set a 148.183, and the second by 52 milliseconds to set a 148.131. Panda was happy to achieve the first point one here. Lap 1 was much cleaner and faster than his first record, with overall tighter and cleaner lines. Lap 2 was slightly slower, mainly due to him touching the off-road slightly after the first NISC. Lap 3 beginning NISC was smooth, but the exit sent him a bit wide, losing some time. The rest of the run was driven quite clean, 
and the ending shroom was tighter than the last turn, bringing in the point one time for Panda. A few hours later, Panda got his 148.131, which is overall similar to the point one eight three. Lap 1 was Panda's strongest world record lap 1, also being quite close to the best known split. Panda says that this could be due to factors such as the beginning MT NISC, the clean off-road hops, and the slip drift into the piranha plant section. Lap 2 was ever so slightly slower than his previous run, with a noticeable time loss when he hit the spin booster after the MT trick on the bone bridge. Panda ended the run with a very solid lap 3 that had clean driving and a tight ending shroom. Following this up the next day, January 7th, Panda would continue his tear on the track, making a much larger improvement of 117 milliseconds to set a 148.014, painstakingly close to the sub. After a decent lap 1, Panda had a very good lap 2, with strong driving and a beginning NIC that got one fast off-road hop, which saved a lot of time. It's possible to not lose any time at all to this off-road, which we'll get into later. Lap 3 was pretty good, but ultimately it had mistakes that cost him the sub. After the turn going into the trick ramp into the piranha plant section, Panda got a spin slip drift that lost some time, and the final shortcut was very wide and safe, which was just enough to block him for the 147. Panda's quick improvements over just two days made the sub seem inevitable. However, Panda's rampage would come to a screeching halt. On January 16th, Army would return to this track and snipe the sub from Panda, beating his time by 21 milliseconds to drive the first ever 147 here, with a new world record of 147.993. How did he get this time? You guessed it, Motion Glider. Here is a comparison between Panda and Army's gliders. Army is happy to be the first 147 on the track, but said that the run was actually quite bad, considering that the Motion Glider saves about 75 milliseconds each lap and he only cut the world record by 21 milliseconds total. However, it wouldn't be long until Army would improve further. The next day, on January 17th, Army achieved a 147.830, cutting his previous time down by 163 milliseconds. Lap 1 was unfortunate since Army usually averages .1s, but laps 2 and 3 were both solid. After this run, Army said that he was, quote, nowhere near satisfied and would go for a mid-147. This would come for Army later that same day, when he improved by a massive 160 milliseconds, getting a 147.670. Army was happy that he finally got a consistent run using the Motion Glider strat. The best known splits, all by Army, give a 147.349, so there was definitely lots of room to improve. While Army and Panda weren't able to get it in either of their runs, it is possible to get a so-called Lucky Nisk where no time is lost to the off-road during the first turn NISC on laps 2 and 3. As you can see here, the Lucky NISC saves about 0.2, which means that a 2 out of 2 Lucky NISC run could give a mid to high 146. That's probably far in the future though, but for now, a huge congratulations to both Panda and Army on their runs here, and best of luck on future improvements. Sweet Sweet Canyon was the next track to see its world record lowered this month. On January 9th, Alberto lowered his world record three times. The first world record was a 16 millisecond cut, with a time of 149.182. Lap 1 was fine overall, but Alberto said the hop strap before the shortcut wasn't done perfectly. Lap 2 was, in Alberto's words, really bad, saying the driving overall was improvable and the strap before the shortcut was done incorrectly. A new strategy implemented in this run was to bring back Japanese player Monar's extra mini turbo before the shortcut on laps 2 and 3. Monar was the first player to get a world record with the baby strategy and performed the mini turbos like this. It was later phased out, as seen here in Braden's world record, but Alberto would bring it back. By releasing the first mini turbo after the ramp very early, you can get air from the hill, which gives a lot of momentum. Alberto says it saves about 150 milliseconds if done perfectly, but getting a good shortcut is extremely difficult because sometimes you'll get too much speed. Later that day, Alberto would improve again by 12 milliseconds to a 149.170. Alberto said that it was way more consistent than the previous run, but still had room for improvement on laps 2 and 3. This was made very clear when just 11 minutes later, Alberto would improve his time again, this time by 102 milliseconds to set a 149.068. Alberto played out of his mind on laps 1 and 2, with both laps being best known splits. Knowing he was on double BKS pace, Alberto was quite nervous and had a shaky lap 3. 
The end result was still a solid lap 3, but he described the pink path as, quote, really weird. The best known splits, all set by Alberto, give a 148.891. Alberto says that it's definitely possible for him to sub the track and get a 148, but failing the double BKS pace run was demotivating. Regardless, congratulations to Alberto on his world records here this month, and best of luck on going for the sub. Also in January, we saw some activity on GBA Mario Circuit. On January 12th, we had a great old school player come back to the world record scene, mostly known for being the first player to sub 158 on Cloud Top Cruise back in the 8U days. Maki would set his first world record in 8DX since 2017, beating Chlorine's time by 24 milliseconds to set a time of 124.068. GBA Mario Circuit has seen many new strats ever since the transition from Mach 8 to Biddy Buggy in January of 2019 with a 125.076 world record by Sabas. These include extra mini turbos before the first boost ramp, charging a mini turbo before exiting the anti-gravity section, and adding in a mini turbo at the end of lap 3 and later on laps 1 and 2 as well. This track was pushed and optimized really far thanks to Lemon and Chlorine mainly, and this world record by Maki would be the first to beat the original Biddy world record by a full second. Just two days later, Chlorine would reclaim the world record here, edging out Maki by 24 milliseconds to set a new world record of 124.044 and start the push for the sub. This run mainly cleaned up some slight driving mistakes by Maki, but he unfortunately lost some time with the alignments at the start of lap 2, which may have cost him the sub. But 12 days later, on January 26th, just over two years after the first 124, Chlorine would finally achieve the first ever 123 on this track with a 123.990. This run is overall insanely consistent, pushing the track pretty close to the limits at this point. Chlorine managed to sub every lap. Lap 1 was a sub 29.6, and laps 2 and 3 were both sub 27.2. A 54 millisecond improvement at this point of optimization is very rare and can be underappreciated. The driving standards required to get the world record on this track now are just on a whole different level. Congratulations to Maki and Chlorine on your records here this month. Okay, for this next track, we're gonna have to keep it as brief as possible because this January on We Grumble Volcano, Panda lowered the world record. 17 times. At the beginning of the month, Hyundai had the world record here with a 154.384. By the end of the month, thanks to Panda's remarkable consistency and a new strat, the world record had been lowered over the course of the month by 618 milliseconds down to a 153.766. We've split this track into two parts, so let's start our speed run through the Grumble Volcano world records. Starting off, on January 15th, Panda came to the track to improve Hyundai's 245 day lasting run by 31 milliseconds to get a 154.353. Panda says that he was happy to reclaim world record here, and was originally planning to quote, just get a point two and leave. He says his lap one was sloppy, lap two was good, and lap three at the time was a best known split. The next day, Panda would improve by four milliseconds, to a 154.349. Lap 1 had a much better tunnel exit, but lap 3 suffered from a suboptimal shroom. Now we get to a small strat change. Starting with his 154.330 time, which improved the world record by 19 milliseconds, on lap 1, Panda no longer tricks on the glider and instead does a counter slide like maneuver. After doing the slip strat out of the cave, you land, slide one way, then slide the other way which carries your trick momentum over the glider, and also makes the glider coin easier to get. Lap 1 was average for this strat, and lap 2 was very strong, actually being Panda's fastest lap 2 with these strats. Lap 3 was weak, missing the slip strat out of the cave, but was still an easy improvement with the new glider strat. Again on January 17th, Panda got a 154.273, which was an easy improvement, and just cleaned up the mistakes from the .330. Still, Panda was happy to achieve the point too. The next day, Panda got a 154.238, which had a very fast lap too. 
Panda's 154.226 on the next day was his first world record racing someone else's ghost, which he said was very helpful because of the fast lap 2 in his previous world record, which made his ghost annoying to race against. The next day, on January 20th, Panda would improve two times, the first by 2 milliseconds to a 154.224, and then by 1 millisecond to a 154.223. However, this was just half of Panda's records here this month. On January 21st, Panda would revolutionize the track. Alright, let's talk about this new strat. After landing from the shortcut, if you charge your mini turbo earlier than usual, you have enough room to charge an additional mini turbo and release it as an MT trick. If you land from this trick on a certain point of the mound, you can just drive over it without much time loss. This strat debuted in Panda's 154.196, which was just one of five improvements that day, each run further optimizing this new strat. Panda's next time after the 196 was a 154.161, shortly followed up by a 154.042, which was then improved by 119 milliseconds to bring in the sub at 153.931. This run's lap 1 was pretty below average, but the new NISC strat was pretty good. Lap 2 got a lucky tight NISC, which saved a lot of time, but resulted in a high trick going into lap 3, which prevented Panda from getting the MT trick on the first ramp. Nerves were high on lap 3, but Panda was able to finish the run and get the sub. Half an hour later, Panda would get the first .8 at a 153.839. Lap 1 was pretty good, but the NISC exit was a bit wide. Lap 2 was also pretty good, but could have had a better beginning. Lap 3 was below average, and Panda says the overall lines just weren't there. Panda would get two more point eights with a 153.812 and a 153.804, but there isn't much use going over these since they were just cleaning up his previous mistakes. On January 24th, Panda would finish his 10-day world record streak on the track, achieving a 154.766. Lap 1 was good, lap 2 was pretty good, lap 3 was also good, until Panda missed the UMT in the tunnel. This unfortunately lost him around 75 milliseconds, but everything else about the lap was good. On January 30th, Panda would get his final improvement of the month, achieving a .6 with a 153.661. All three laps were consistent with no blatant errors. Lap 1's NISC was nice, but he got this really high bounce that lost some time, though not as much as it looks like. Lap 2 was just clean. Panda took a risky angle into the lap 3 NISC and didn't hop as much to face the finish line. He ended up going more straight and getting a fast NISC. The landing was a bit wide, but overall, Panda was happy with this run. He says now he is much more consistent at the new lap 1 and 2 NISC, which should help with further improvements. A huge congratulations to Panda for all 17 of your improvements this month, and best of luck on continuing to bring this track down as much as you can. Moving on to the next track, we have Alberto's quick improvements on Bowser's Castle which he lowered 6 times in just about 24 hours. On January 19th, Alberto achieved a 150.668, a 7 millisecond improvement from his previous time. Bowser's Castle is one of the tracks in this game that has a pace lock. A pace lock is where a track has moving parts, such as the trains on Superbell Subway, the moles on Moomoo Meadows, or in this case, the waves at the Bowser's Fist section. Arriving at the wave section on lap 2 later and getting the good waves more than makes up for it if you had arrived earlier and not gotten them so the run essentially starts after this part. On this run, Alberto was actually too fast for this pace lock, so he skipped the first mini turbo of lap 2 on purpose and additionally hopped immediately after his UMT release in order to lose time. After the waves, Alberto had a good ending to lap 2, but suffered some mistakes lap 3, the biggest ones being the turn before the split path and a really wide shortcut. Well, really wide by time trial standards. As you can see, Bowser's Castle is a track that uses the motion glider technique, which it picked up in December of 2019. It was actually the first track to implement motion glider in a world record, and greatly popularized the technique. This helped bring the track down below the 2 minute mark in just 2 weeks. The day after Alberto's .668 run, he improved 5 more times, and had fun with the character selection while doing so. The first run was a 26 millisecond improvement, giving him a 159.642, where once again Alberto had to lose time by doing some hops after the first lap 2 UMT. The end of lap 2 wasn't the best, which made for a slow lap 1 and 2 combo, which is actually how the best known splits are tracked through the pace lock. Lap 3 of this run was average, and like the 
Alberto says the turn before the split path could have been better. For the rest of his improvements, we're just going to analyze the run starting after the lap 2 waves because of the pace lock. Just 41 minutes after setting his .642, Alberto improved by 4 milliseconds to get a 159.638. The lap 2 glider wall hit was perfect, but he slightly went wide at the glider, costing a bit of time. Even though it was minimal, any error after lap 2 waves can cost the entire run at this point in the track's optimization. The lap 2 shortcut was pretty good, but Alberto didn't go as tight as possible at the entry. The biggest time loss on this run was getting sent wide by the wall hit on lap 3. However, Alberto wouldn't have to worry for long, as just 9 minutes later, he would improve again, this time by 37 milliseconds to achieve a 159.601. Alberto says that this is where Bowser's Castle starts getting tough to optimize. The ending of lap 2 was close to perfect for him, and entering lap 3 he knew a .5 was possible. Lap 3 started out great, and it had a good anti-gravity section. Unfortunately, he once again lost time at the wall hit and the glider. The final shortcut was good, and Alberto was really nervous since the run was much faster than he had ever been before. Because of this, he wiggled the stick just a bit to make sure he got the last mini turbo. When drifting, any slight wiggle loses time, and here, despite only losing about 5 to 10 milliseconds, it did cost the 0.5. But this is Alberto we're talking about. A few hours later, he would get a 159.585, a 16 millisecond improvement. At the end of lap 3, the turn before the wall hit was finally good, but unfortunately the wall hit itself was a bit slow. The glider was really good, getting as close as possible to the rock on the left while preserving all the speed and momentum. Alberto says he was not happy at all with the shortcut on lap 3, and is actually surprised that I didn't lose more time. The final improvement this month was by 20 milliseconds, to give a 159.565. Despite it being the fastest of them all, Alberto said that it was quote, an absolute mess. Alberto hit the rock at the lap 2 glider and had a slightly wide exit out of the shortcut, which resulted in him not even being ahead of the ghost he was racing, which was ARMY's previous 159.713 world record. Because of this, Alberto played extremely risky lap 3, and it paid off, becoming the new best known split by over 50 milliseconds and the first 38 second lap. The split path trick had a really good line, and the glider wall hit was perfect. Alberto says he usually never gets both of these right in runs, so that was really nice to see. Alberto had actually planned to stop after getting the first point 0.5, but got bored and started playing again, only to get this time within 5 minutes. The best known splits on Bowser's Castle give a 159.494, but, due to everything we've gone over, that would be extremely difficult to get in one run. Alberto has no current plans on further improving this track, but it will definitely be interesting to see how the track progresses in the future. Congratulations Alberto on your improvements this month! For the next track, we're heading to Mario Kart Stadium. On January 21st, Japanese player Nasuno reclaimed the world record here, improving the previous record by a massive 295 milliseconds achieving a 135.293. This improvement is insane, especially when you look at the room for improvement. For this run, Nasuno added an extra MT after the first NISC on all laps, which saves around 50 to 75 milliseconds each lap. He didn't do the wall clip NISC like Ronnie's former world record did, but Nasuno says he thinks that he can save even more time if he combines the wall clip with the new MT. Let's go over each lap now. Lap 1 was pretty good, but Nasuno says it is more than 0.1 off of his best split. Lap 2 was actually the new best known split, and Nasuno even thinks a sub 31 is definitely possible, because the line at the first NIS could be improved. On lap 3, Nasuno says he lost at least 0.1 for the first turn to the first NIC due to the quote, bad lines. Considering that the motion glider and the ramp NISC are pretty inconsistent techniques, it's very impressive for Nasuno to execute a very consistent run with no major failures overall. In my opinion, I see this track going down even further, and as Nasuno says, he's sure that 134 is definitely possible. Congrats Nasuno on your world record this month. Heading on over to SNES Donut Plains 3, on January 23rd, Dutch player Alpaco reclaimed his world record here, cutting Alberto's previous world record by just 2 milliseconds to get a 113.476. Lap 1 started out very well, but Alpaco did go wide entering the mole section, which lost him quite a bit of time. The Ultra Mini Turbo on the last turn was released very late, which made the lap an average .9. Lap 2 is truly the outstanding lap of this run, becoming the new best known split by over .1. Alpaco says he gained most of his time at the mole section. 
The landing from the turn skip was really clean and resulted in a perfectly aligned high mini turbo trick on the first mole. After this insane lap 2, Alpaco was very nervous on lap 3, and his nerves caused a really slow water entry. The lap suffered from some other small time losses, like going wide in the second underwater section, as well as hitting the grass at the end of the last turn nesk, but overall he was super glad he was able to finish the run through his nerves. Alpaco says he came back to Donut Plains because he wanted to give back his record, and is relieved it happened with this run. He says his best splits give something around a 113.1, which is his goal for the track in the future. The overall best known splits on this course, using an 800 coin strat, give a 112.892, but the track is super inconsistent and the sub is still a long time away. Congratulations Alpaco on your improvement this month, and good luck on achieving your 113.1 goal. January also saw some activity on Rainbow Road. Out of nowhere, Japanese player Rokoa set his first world record ever in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, coming to Rainbow Road with a time of 159.623, shaving 2 milliseconds off of Alberto's former world record. Rokoa is a player who had some world records on Mario Kart 8 for the Wii U, but his most recent record there was in February 2015. We actually don't know how to contact Rokoa, so if any of you guys do, please let me know in the comments. As of now, this is actually Rokoa's only known top 10 time on any track. Thankfully, Alberto was willing to do an analysis for us, so let's get into it. Alberto says that overall, Rokoa's driving is improvable, but he's never seen someone take the brake drift turns as well as Rokoa does. Alberto described the beginning of lap 2 as, quote, actually insane. However, Rokoa lost a bit of time at the low trick due to not getting as low air as he could have. The turn after the fast glider was taken a lot better than on lap 1, and the rest of the run was clean, with another insane start to lap 3 and really good edge grinding. The glider on lap 3 wasn't taken as optimally as it could have been to set up for the shroom, but overall, this is a really impressive run and super exciting to see the first new world record holder of 2021. The best known splits here give a 149.430, so we could see at least a .5 here as soon as next month. Congratulations Rokoa on your time this month, and best of luck on future records on Rainbow Road or other tracks. Ending off the month for 150cc, we go to Dragon Driftway. On January 30th, Alberto achieved a time of 140.786, cutting the record down by 17 milliseconds and marking his first world record year since 2019 in August, the same month the track switched to babies. This track is very difficult to play, and someone's previous world record was quite strong. Alberto was quite happy to get this run. Let's get right into the analysis. Lap 1 was clean overall. A bit of time was lost due to some weird airtime at the start, but Alberto continued on and got a nice NISC. This gap jump is one of the coolest shortcuts in the game, and very satisfying to pull off. After 3 tricks, Alberto unfortunately missed sticking to the ground after the MT release, which was quite annoying. He wasn't too proud of the start of lap 2, but everything went according to plan except for the last bump trick, where he actually got too low of a trick and lost momentum. The run almost died on lap 3, when Alberto had a weird turn after the NISC, but he was somehow able to stay alive. He once again got a low trick on the last bump and lost time, which is actually rare, so that was disappointing. Overall, Alberto was very happy to get this run after so long, especially after getting multiple world record fails before it. His best splits currently give a 140.544, but he says it's insanely hard to optimize the track as the lap transitions and shroom spots are very inconsistent and can easily kill a run. As for now, he has no plans on improving the time. Congrats Alberto on your record here. Alright, that wraps it up for all the world records this month for 150cc, but we still have a lot more records to cover in 200cc. That video will be coming out this weekend as well, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you guys all for watching, and we'll see you shortly with the rest of this world record review for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, January 2021.